Hello everyone, welcome to SAP Technomaniac. In this video, we will discuss about function import. So, we have seen the card operations, create, read and update, delete operations on particular entity type. Whenever we create any entity type in SCGW on those entity types, we can perform any of these operation, create, read, update and delete. But some of the things we will be not able to do using this card operations. Like I have created in my previous video sales order header and sales order line item entity. Then I put association and everything we have done. We created the sales order as well. But suppose I want to release the sales order. Just think it out. Which card operation you will use? Which method, which HTTP method you, use, you will use? I mean you will use get, post put or delete. I think uh, to approve a sales order, to reject a sales order or cancel anything if you want to do, we can't use any one, any of these particular methods of respective get, put, post, delete functions. So doing this thing, we have something called the function import. In the function import, we can write our functionality which is not satisfied by the card operation and that can be called again through the service that we will see today. So without wasting the time, let's jump into the system. We will try to see how we can use function import in our project, sales order project. In the practical in the function import, what I tried to create was scenario where we need the sales order count by status for that particular customer. So what I mean by the sales order count by the status. So for that, I have to open the one of the table that is called the VBuck table, which will give us the status of the sales order. So in this table, if you see, we can pass here sales order and you, we can get the reference status. So if you click on F4, the status will give uh, that sales order is completely processed. It is if it is partially processed or yet to process not yet processed or not relevant. This kind of information given by that particular table VBUG for the particular sales order. So in this case, we want to get the status. Just try to think out in our project, if we try to use, we have the two entity types, sales order header and sales order item, where we are getting the header and align item data. And we don't have any, we nowhere use VBug table at all. Uh, this is the different kind of functionality. So along with the, whenever uh, he's displaying the uh, sales order data on the screen, wow. so for the particular customer, he want to display that customer have these many orders in this status. It is not processed. It is completely processed and not relevant. That kind of the things he want to display along with this data in one of the file. So how he can do? So that is the, thing we will try to achieve in this. So what we will do, we will create the function import for this. In the function import, there can be the importing parameter or there can be the exporting parameter. The exporting importing parameter I will use as a customer and exporting parameter I will give the for that particular customer, how many orders are processed, how many order are completely processed, how many orders are not relevant that kind of information I, I will give. Let's create the function import. To create the function import, since why we are creating the function import, that is very important thing because none of the entity type currently in my system is not satisfying the my need. So that is the reason to achieve that functionality. I use the, I create, I want to create one function import. I can create one entity type, but no use because that entity type, uh, I don't want to create uh, like that. If I create the entity, why we create the entity type to the to do the card operations. I don't want to create this data, update this data or delete this data from the system, this uh, status count. So that is the reason the function import is the good for us. This is the one of the scenario. Suppose I want to improve, uh, approve the sales order or I want to reject the sales order, that kind of scenario also we can use the function import. So that is the use of the function import. Just think it out whenever the requirements come. If it is not satisfying using your card operation, just go with the function import. If you, 
I will give the do's and don't, don'ts also whenever you create the function import that will be the end of the video. So to create the function import, what you have to do, you have to create on the data model, right click over here, click on the create, first I have to click on edit button for the my sales order project and just right click and import a uh, create. We created the entity type, entity set, association, complex type, yes, you had to discuss, it's not much. And but association set also we have created, but function import, we didn't create it. Today we'll create the function import. Just click on the function import creation. You have to give the function import name. The most important thing, uh, so in this case, I'm giving the SO count by status. Uh, don't give like that, get SO count by status, put SO count by status or delete, because get, put, delete, we will do using the uh, using our entity type and those methods so always use so count by status that is the reason i use function import once you give the function import name the function import got created so again it is asking what you want to return i want to return these many data to return this so i have to define the return type so in, you can create any complex type, entity type or no return so means you don't want to give any return. No return when we will do if we want to create something using the function import in the our system. That time that is uh, done by the put method. So there are two HTTP method, HTTP method we can use in the function import. One is the get and second is the post. Sorry, not put post post means create. If you want to create something in that case, we don't need return, but we need the payload. So we have to select the HTTP method. In this case, I want to get the data from the system. So I have to use get and the return time. I have to create some return type which will be having these four values. Then only I can do that thing. So for doing this, uh, I will be going to create in this case entity type. You can create complex type, but it is not needed. I will show you when we need to create complex type in upcoming videos. So what you can do, you just click on entity types, create one new entity type and give entity type name. So in this case, since I'm returning, returning SO uh, count, so I can give SO count by status, you can give some meaningful name you have to give for the your entity type and create the entity set also along with this and always use the status state also you can use or you can use uh, underscore s to to make it in plural form and set also it is fine but most of the time we use s that that is not but in this case uh, that reading is not good so that is the reason we are not it's not i'm not feeling appropriate so if you read that so count by status statuses instead of status set that's uh, giving more meaningful name so that is the reason i have used the status and i have created this entity type uh, i need to define some of the properties so as i told you we will be needing the exporting parameter these four properties customer not process complete process and not relevant so first i will be creating the customer number so always use camel case as i told you i am in my previous videos multiple time and since you are creating the entity type, you should have some key field and what you can do, uh, that's it, customer and you can give the above field name also, EDM type that should be string. In this case, we are not mapping uh, through any structure. So we can use directly here and maximum length you can give 10. I can create another one. Uh, another one will be the not processed or complete processed whatever you want to give completely processed you can give this uh, again this is camel case and this is also EDM string and length in not EDM string this time it is count so we have to return the count it should be in integer format you can use integer 16 1632 or 64 based on your uh, how much sales orders are available in the system you can do uh, you can create another one uh, that is the not processed control C or not relevant control V you can create one another one not relevant these are the four status I'm using if you have more status of the, your sales orders that also you can use here so put the uh, integer type again last th last thing is again integer type 
these are the integer type and length no need to for the integer type you no need to put length or you want to put the ABAP field name you can uh, customer we have the ABAP field name so you can select here this is the data element and you can put the Kunnar in this case it will get the data element detail so it will be mapped to the Kunnar conversion time it is very helpful to convert the internal data to the external data external EDM to the internal ABAP type and ABAP type to the EDM type so that is the reason we will give here ABAP type it will auto do the automatic conversion and this is the data we have created uh, as so count by status and these are the four data now I will go to my function import I created one entity type uh, in this case in my case I am going to use one entity type so I selected entity type it should return always one return uh, if you have table if you want to return form of the table you can use one one to n as well if you have multiple data which you want to send back through the function import then you can use one to n also but in my case it is one so that is the reason i'm using a one and entity set name if you don't give because you are not sending the multiple data that is fine and in this case action for the entity type uh, that is uh, so count by status which entity type you are using for the actions this is the entity type and uh, this is get method that's it nothing else let me try to generate the runtime artifacts and we will see how our meta service metadata service got impacted and it this function import generated in the DP, uh, model provider class also that also we can see so once i generated this one so there is some error function import return time accepted return type kind field okay i didn't fill this one uh, what is the kind of uh, field this is the return type kind field is the so count by status okay something else okay let me regenerate again <laughs> so it's done uh, it's successfully regenerated so now we will go to the we created one function import this function import we will use to get the data from the system but again the what kind of data we are getting just the count not the entire gate i'm getting one line only it's uh, so what we i will do i will open the eclipse uh, so to implement the function import i have opened the eclipse in that you can see there are a lot of code we have written throughout this video series so in this also we will we did the for example some of the example get entity set get entity and get entity method for the header and item and we use expanded entity set and create deep entity to create the cells order in the system so same thing we will use so what i will gonna do here uh, in this case uh, we will be creating this particular uh, function import so whenever you define any function import and you have to write the function import related code what you have to do you have to just come to your either you can go to the ic24 and other if you are using clips and redefine this particular method which i am going to show you it will be it is the part of same uh, interface just you have to cl click on tilde operator and you give space then you will get the method name called execution action except enter and you can do redefinition and if you go to sc24 also there also this method is available just you right click and redefine that one that's it that will be enough so in the execution action method this is the relevant for the function import if you do f2 over here and if you see so this is for the execute this the documentation says the execute a function import inside this what all are the function import we have defined in the service those all function import code we have to write in this particular method let's redefine it control one uh, implementation i have added the implementation let me do control f3 and let me shift above control x so we no need to go up and down this particular method and control x and go up lot of code we have written throughout the course and just after this class method let me control v shift f1 control f3 so if you see this particular executes execute action importing and exporting parameter what it is giving 
So there are something called action name. Whenever this particular, whenever we call the particular service from the front end, then it will return us one action name. Action name is the function import name that we have to read out that function import name and then we have we can read the what all are the importing parameter from the it parameter and we will use the io tech request for that it parameter got absolute and we will fill the data finally if we are sending data back then we will fill the data in the er data this is the very simple form so whenever you implementing the execute action button for the function import make sure you have to use case statement because in your case uh, that might be the case uh, you have multiple function imports so you have to use case statement and in this case and uh, you have to use this action name over here control c control v and in our case what is the action name uh, that we have defined so count by status control c and that value we have to pass here control v scepter so what we are doing here whenever the action name action name means function import name is the so count by status you want you have to execute uh, this code and when when others you have to execute this one if you have multiple function import you can write the those multiple function import in each when condition and you can give the function import name like that you can uh, define your uh, code let me what i will do uh, we will not implement as of now we will implement later point of time let me activate and let me put the point in sc24 and we'll see what all are the data is coming in the dpc extension class of this execution as i told you you can do from sc24 also if you come here uh, and do the let's go up this is employee this is employee project i have to do for the sales order dpc extension class and this if you see let me increase this size little bit uh, execute action button we have already re-implemented and you can re-implement from here as well you just have to click here and just click on the redefine button you can redefine from here or you can uh, open uh, display object list and there also you can right click and redefine let me open this one we already did the implementation in eclipse i just want to put external breakpoint because i'm i'm not able to debug in this system in the eclipse that is the reason i want to do here you just put uh, the when we start cds i will try to get the ana system where we might be able to debug in eclipse itself we no need to come sc24 and do here so let's put breakpoint and uh, let me execute one more time here uh, this particular service to execute the service you have to open obviously you have to open iwf and gw underscore client let me go from here yeah Uh, and click on get with client you want to call this particular so what be the your uh, service format uh, i think there's two session got open let me close one of the session which is not required and what you have to do your after your service name you have to give this your function import name that's a very important to call the function import before going to that i just want to show you the metadata to show you metadata let me op uh, let me show here itself i would have opened the chrome but it will consume a lot of memory again the system goes go, will go slow so that is the reason let me show metadata here itself dollar metadata so so how we can see the function import in the metadata if you execute over here it will get us the metadata uh, we have the entity type uh, so first is a sales order header second is a sales order item and one more entity type we have created so count by status you can see not relevant these are the fields are there let me do this one here so you can see properly and let me these are the three entity type let me close this entity type we have already one association we don't we are not worrying about the association an entity type container we have the entity set name one is the sales order header sales order item and so count by status set these are the container but for us what is the relevant this is the function import 
after the all association set name and entity set name we have the function import name there is the one of the function import this one uh, it is telling and for that what is the entity set this is the entity set and uh, what is the method we have to use get method we have to use and what will it will return it will return as so count by status that entity type it will return us in the, this form of the values like that we can find out in the service if there are some function import is there or not once we find out the service you just have to copy this one control c and you can see the same service in the group browser itself it will be visible better way i will try to show you uh, but as of now what i want to do i just want to call the service and we have one importing parameter as you saw in this customer i didn't define the importing parameter as of now so let me define the importing parameter uh, in my project because i want to get the this all the detail for particular customer so to define the importing parameter what you have to do function import parameter is there this is the function import we already defined but we didn't define any function import parameter you just double click on this fun function import parameter it will get some value from the uh, service and based on those values we will return this one entity type which we have defined in the this particular uh, return if you don't have any importing parameter no need to define any function importing parameter but in this case i have one customer number based on this customer number i will rate for this customer number these are the process this is completely processed this is not relevant if you want to send the data for all the customers no need to define any importing parameter so in this case uh, let me go to the function import parameter and create one importing parameter over here so i will give the importing parameter name is a customer and the edm core type is a string so a string and data element will be the okay i can give kunna no need to worry so i can give you give here kunna so so maximum length should be 10 and label if you want to give you give and you regenerate your service because as soon as you do something in scgw it should reflect in your classes so for that you have to do regenerate your service we are getting one customer number as a function import and we are returning in this function import these all the values in the form of this entity type so count by status so like that we are doing so in this case so how i get to know because i want to pass the customer number and how to pass that customer number here you don't need to use bracket how we were doing passing the key when we were passing the key field so you have to do question mark and you have to use customer and if you see the data metas uh, data also got changed let me show you metadata uh, service metadata so you can if you see the service metadata over here uh, okay i think it opened the explorer internet explorer and showing over there let it show not not an issue uh, so if you see the metadata of the function import you can see now one parameter got added here customer which is length is 10 and which is edm string previously we were not able to see this parameter now we will see we can see the parameter as well and this is the function import name this is the entity set for the return type and get method we are going to use and this is the return type you can see and like that we can read the function import it will be the in the entity uh, uh, it will be available after the association so you can see uh, how the generally we have we have first all the entity types and after the entity type uh, we have the associations and then we have the uh, all the association set names uh, those we can have entity set names here then association set name here and at last we have the function import like that we can read the service so let me close it out and let me call this customer equal to i want to pass one customer over here uh, so as i remember one of the customer was the uh, let me one for something i let me pass something i will pass as of now some customer we need to pass 2004 let me execute this one and we will try to see what all are the importing and exporting parameters triggering so you can see if you try to click on the action name the same action name this is the function import name which we have created based on this we have to write the code and if you go to the local variable we have the function name you can use this it parameter also but uh, i will recommend you to use this iotech request this is the this code 
absolute only it is available for backward comp compatibility so what all are the data you want to get the service you should always get from this particular offset go to the MR request and go inside this one and you can see here also we have the parameter tape somewhere should be there parameters are there so we have to read this parameter is customer that we have to write code to read and finally we have to fill the data over here and we have to send back and it will work this is the basics about the function import let's write the code as well so i don't want to spend too much time again so let's show you something small small things and then i will just get the write the code so to get the parameter what you have to do you have to use object as i told you and if you control space you if you will do here then you will call get parameter something get parameters except f1 you can do you can get those parameter in one of the table lt parameter parameter and after getting the parameter i know i'm getting the parameter in the kunnar uh, customer field and that customer field also it's not coming in the form of the uh, i can see uh, let's uh, let's see this table let me control f3 uh, what i will do let i will do f8 over here f8 and try to re-execute one more time currently it is getting successfully executed but we are not sending bait data there you can see zero 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 values are coming over here so that's not good thing so uh, so if you see the LT parameter F6, F6, F6 and this you have the customer number but you can see the uh, it is coming ages it's not converted values because parameters as I can see uh, it's not mapped to the above fields so it's not converting automatically so we have to do the alpha conversion from our own and then we have to use this customer then we have to get the data from the VBAK and VBUG table then we have to count the sales order and that we have to pass back to the entity that code I already have written I don't want to spend that much time again and again so I did this code before uh, when I was recording the co this video so I just I will show you guys what I did so let me go to the Eclipse again I'm using the older version so I'm not using a lot of advanced SQL statements because it's not supported over here. So that is the reason, uh, pardon, pardon me, uh, if I'm not doing something wrong. So this, let me remove this one, delete, delete. So this is data declaration. Let me shift above, control X. And let me shift above, uh, control V. Let me explain you. This is the same code we, till now we have written. LT parameter we are getting. I read this LT parameter, I know there, are, there is only one parameter. If you see the LT parameter there, this is the value, uh, name pair, value and name pair. I just want to get this value for the first line. So I read first line and go to the value and uh, I did alpha conversion. This is again new syntax. If you don't know, I have already created on the new syntaxes videos that you can use. Even this is 7.4 video, a uh, 7.4 version, you can use most of the newer syntax but select queries uh, newer syntax you can't use because that's more to most of the sub support most of the syntax is supported about 7.41 packages that then only i try to use comma separated list i was not able to use i want to do in select statement whatever i want oh, i'm doing here uh, i want to count on go inside the database itself but uh, it is not supported in this so i write the basic again classical approach only so what we are doing basically we are getting the sales order customer number and this status from VBAK and VBUG table I joined VBLN based on the VBLN both the table and I got all the data so I have the customer number now and based on the customer number I am getting this all the data I pass the customer number in the header table and for the header table VBAK table and I got all the sales order those all the sales order again I pass to the VBUG table to get all the status because we don't have customer number in the VBUG table then again what I did I filled this ls underscore count which is type of our entity type so I fill that ls underscore count customer number and as I look through this table if it is status is C it is completely processed I added one count here if it is not processed I added one count here if it is not relevant I did count here and at the end of that I have ls underscore count uh, this is not required 
uh, if you using the one to uh, I can pass this is ls underscore count directly over here control V control it. I think ls underscore count when we will be needing lt underscore count I will show you that also when if you define your entity type uh, return type is one to n you are returning as a it's is a entity set then you have to define uh, this is a lt underscore count and lt underscore count that but in this case i'm just returning one line so you just pass the lc count and you have to fill the er data and that's it that's it done i would have write one by line by line again code but it's not you know use it's normal abap code let me do a control r3 and this code again you can write in the advanced form you can write uh, you can do this counting and all all the directly in database if you're working on hana and one more thing if you, if your reduce operator is supported this thing you can do using the reduce operator you can get all the count directly in using the reduce operator that also you can do but nothing is supported here so that is the reason i used classical approach so let's go to the sc24 i have activated the code control f3 uh, let me put one more time point i know this breakpoint got messed up over here and i will show you the in the debug mode how the code is running okay uh, so let me re-execute my service again one more time uh, but this time the problem is that uh, i think that customer is not valid we will not get the data let me do f6 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 lt parameter if you see as i shown you customer in 2004 we got the customer and we took the customer in this variable and then we did con alpha conversion we have added the 0 0 and i try to get some of the data i got some data yeah we have data so much data 2093 entries are there for this customer but the status you have to check let me go to the table display in le format that is a nice feature in new app you just go in descending format there is some rf stk is all are blank so this this is no use i will try to use uh, some other customer where we have a c and all the things so what i will do is of now customer number you can see i have filled over here and i'm i'm looping over there status in this case blank so not relevant i'm increasing the count to one so all the all are the not relevant in this case so if you come here and put breakpoint control s let me save this breakpoint and let me do f8 and if you see the ls count this one again only one not relevant is filled not completely processed and not processed is not filled for this customer we'll try to use some other customer which we have data with a and uh, completely processed not process means a and completely pro complete process means c and we have converted this data in external form is using the copy data to wrap and let's do f8 and the same result i hope so we will get and the output as well you can say 20900 and customer num number is it 2004 we got over here now what i have to do let me pass some other customer uh, to get some other customer what i can do uh, let me comment this lv kunna control c plus then and just get the state data control f3 to see the data because i don't want to go here and there again if i go by table by table and let me execute my service one more time Uh, in this case what it will do it will return all the counts but i don't want that but i want to see the query how it is uh, how data we are getting we got so many data in uh, this time because we didn't pass customer over here but i want to see some of the cells order where we have rf stk some values because it's a test system uh, the data is not relevant let me put in the descending order so i can see let me use 45000 cells order so uh, let me do f8 8 45,000 I have to use in this case there will be so many data uh, so you can see based on this is not returning based on the customer number it's a uh, entire data in the system let me pass 45,000 and let me execute one more time before that let me uncomment this one control F better than and let me activate control F3 and uh, I think it got executed already we have to wait one more time let me do f8 f8 and one more time you can execute now because this time i got 
edit the code, control F T, and let me execute one more time. This is uh, this result is as per all the customer available in the system. But now again I put back my condition based on the customer I want. So you can see this time I got only the 39 entries. Some of the entries are blank, some of the entries having A, some of the entries having the C. So based on this, it will count and out of 39, it will return us the result. If you see the ls underscore count, you can see 13 is not processed, completely processed are 18, not relevant are 8. So this result we will get and front end guy, wherever he want to display, based on this data, he can display. At last, I want to add a few points. If you have multiple importing parameters instead of customer, some other parameter is there. You can use your AND operator. The another parameter name you can give, parameter name and equal to that parameter value you can give over here to execute that kind of uh, scenario. If you have multiple parameter you have defined in here. Currently, I am having only one parameter. And second thing, uh, instead of you want to send the single line, uh, currently we are getting the sending the single line only. Uh, if you have multiple line data in your output that you want to send, that also you can do. Uh, you just have to define, you have to come to your function import and instead of return cardinality one, you have to give the return cardinality one to end and respective entity set you have to define here. Then it will send instead of sending the single line, it will send the multiple line data as well. This you have to do as per your requirement. Now at last, let's jump into the PPT and we'll see the do's and don'ts whenever we are using the import function import. So whenever we create the function import, these, uh, these are the three more important things we have to make sure. This is again, I got from the standard documentation. Suppose you are giving some naming convention to the, your function import. You should not use uh, your HTTP method name in front or in between uh, of your function import name. For example, get product by rating if you are using. Don't use get product by using rating instead of use product by rating. In, the, in our case also, uh, SO status, SO count by status we are using. We, might, we should not use get SO count by status. We should use always, always SO count by status. Or you, not only get method, you should not use any of the HTTP method in between your function import name. It will give wrong, impli wrong uh, implication that it can be achieved by the uh, entity set as well, normal uh, card operation. So that should not be done. So you should use appropriate name always. And second thing, do use appropriate HTTP method. A get method must, whenever you define any function import, you have to define, you can define two HTTP method. One is the get and second is the post. If you're getting the data from the system, you have to define get. And if you are doing or posting something in the system, you have to use post. And whenever you are defining post, obviously you have to give some parameter. And again, in the gate also, you can give the parameter to filter out the data in the system, how much data you want to get. That is uh, not uh, restricted that if you are using gate, you should not use parameter. We did in this case. If you are doing some posting, like if you are uh, changing some starters, in that case, you can use the post SCTP method. Third thing, uh, very most important thing. If you find out yourself inventing function import, such as a, suppose you have created one function import, import like create x, create uh, create the uh, sales order. And after some time you have created create uh, read sales order. And after some time you created get sales order. Then you have to think out this can be achieved using the uh, card operation why we are creating the function import. Something should be achieved by the function uh, card operation you should not create the function import for that that is very important thing i think for with that we have done with this video if you have any doubt you can write it down in comment section there is my linkedin profile also there you can follow me on the link linkedin and in next video we will try to see the media stream before going to that video please like this video share this videos with others as well with that thank you and happy learning